Today we're talking about summer youth programs, and let's break it down by the numbers. Okay, so 31,000 middle school students will be affected uh, by what's coming up in the proposed budget for fiscal 2017, and that means that East New York would lose 1,219 seats, East Harlem would lose 1,281 seats, and to bring it just a little closer to home, Brownsville, who we all know has one of the highest child poverty rates in the city, would lose a whopping 1,577 summer camp slots. Now, city fiscal budget proposes to cut summer programming by 31,000 middle school children throughout New York City. And as you look at this map, you can see the dark blue areas right here in Upper Manhattan, Harlem, Bronx, and Central Brooklyn as they break that down by the numbers, also in East New York. So the numbers are quite definitive about the number of slots that are being lost. And now for the rest of the A segment, we go to Greg Johnson. Okay, to guide us through these back and forth developments and what's at stake for thousands of local junior high kids, we wanna welcome back Yolanda McBride, Director of Public Policy at the Children's Aid Society. Yolanda, nice to have you here again. Thanks for being on BK Live. And joining us for the first time is Stephanie Gandell, Associate Executive Director for Policy and Government Relations at Citizens Committee for Children of New York. Welcome. Thank you both very much for being here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, let's talk first about this number, large number that looms large over this issue, the 31,000 children that might be affected. Where are they from? Who are these children, Yolanda? Well, for Children's Aid Society, we have about 400 young people who are actually impacted by the, the loss of slots. And so they're, for us, they're in, they're in East Harlem, they're in Washington Heights, they're in the South Bronx. So we have huge concern about the loss of these slots. Okay. Now, just to follow up that question, um, how is this sort of representative, or how, is this, how do the summer camp slots uh, help to address income equality, inequality? Well, they, they definitely address income equality because if you think about it, the opportunities and the exposure that young people have to uh, robotics, um, engineering, STEM, STEM courses, arts and expression, the kinds of programs that many of us probably were exposed to when we were younger, they um, open opportunities that young people may not have had before. And so that's what we do with the Children's Aid Society. We provide those kinds of opportunities for um, the young people in our middle school programs to ensure that they can um, see different um, different ways and different things and experience diff different things. Okay. Stephanie, how is this affecting your work at the CCC? So we're a multi-issue advocacy organization, so we advocate on behalf of all 31,000 children. Um, we're not direct service program. Um, we're the map makers. Um, Thank you for that. <laughs> no problem. Um, and so what we advocate for are programs for young people and also programs that address income inequality throughout the city like this one. Um, and some, you know, summer programs both help parents work um, so that they can support their families and help young people become successful. It keeps them literally off the streets during the summer. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Does it affect what are the larger scale effects of the economy, of crime, you know, issues yes. of that nature? So we know it's been proven that um, there's summer learning loss, particularly for low income students, and that these programs help to address summer learning loss. Um, these are middle school students, so it keeps them both from getting in trouble and from being the victims of crime. And, you know, we worry about traffic safety. It literally keeps them off the street where they could get hurt. Okay. Now, I need you two to help me out, okay? I do not have any children in New York City. I don't have any children, period, but I've never had to deal with this before. Okay, so if the 31,000 summer slots tied to de Blasio's middle school after school expansion are separate from the other summer programs that existed before he brought this into existence, uh, which the city continues to fund, and the education department, uh, they offer summer school for students in grades 2 to 12. So why was it necessary to create these 31,000 slots if all these other programs already existed? These young people wouldn't be in one of the other programs. So they are kids who are in the after-school program that was part of the de Blasio administration expansion, which we were incredibly grateful for. Um, but these slots are the only ones that don't have a summer component. If they were in any other after-school program, they would have a summer component. 
Let's talk about that. There was this inflation. Now there's these cutbacks. What would you say to Mayor de Blasio? He watches this show. What is your ideal future for the history of these summer programs, Yolanda? Well, in terms of ideal future, in terms of what we would like to see, or— What's a rational outcome for this that you would like oh, to ask the mayor for? A rational outcome would be to have these slots restored, absolutely. I mean, it's there. It's not just about the fact that um, young people will not have programs, but it's also going to have ramifications on other areas of the system. We're talking about our summer youth employment slots as well. We have about 1,500 summer youth employment slots, where we have young people, high schoolers, who are um, learning job skills, you know, through our summer through our summer programs, and over half of those slots are placements in our summer programs. So if those programs are not there, then where are those young people going to be placed for summer youth, summer youth yeah. employment programs? So there are ramifications overall across the system. It's not just about um, young people not having these programs. It's about the ramifications on the other, other parts of the system as well. I have huge concerns. So would love for the mayor to um, restore these slots. It's, it's the right thing to do. OK. But we were just here. I mean, when I say literally just here, May 7th, 2015, <laughs> yeah. we sat yeah. at this very table <laughs> yeah. talking about the same issue. Mm -hmm. Now, the mayor said they weren't going to be able to do it last year. There was a huge up where all of a sudden the funding came through. came through. But they said this is not going to happen next year. We've had a year to sort of create an uproar in that time to say, no, it needs to happen this year again. Mm -hmm. What's been happening during this past year? So over the summer last year, we had the young people who would have been impacted. They sent letters to the mayor thanking him for letting them come to the summer program last year and urging him to put it back in this year. And we got hundreds and hundreds of letters from young people talking about how the program impacted them. Um, and we've spent this past year trying to show how important it is. We did a a second report that surveyed parents and found that 91 percent of them relied on the program to work, two-thirds relied on it so that their children could have healthy summer meals. And so we've been trying to use this last year to make the case that we didn't just need it for one summer, we need it for every summer. Okay. We're, we're, this is a first. We have the council member, Matthew Eugene, has just walked in. Let's get him. <laughs> Okay, yes. uh, we've never had this before. Somebody walk on the set. Thank wow. you so much for being with us. What a privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Absolutely, Greg. Good Thank to see you. you again. I see great people over here. Absolutely, Our great champions. workers, all Thank of you. you. Thank you so much. Good You're to see welcome. You. Good to see you too. Thank you. So Let's much. just Thank ask you. you the question we were going to ask next. <laughs> yes. We're talking about the mayor's office, mm -hmm. the cutbacks, the in, uh, the expansion last year. How is the mayor uh, mayor's office? answering for how he's handling these issues with the summer programs. Uh, let me first and foremost thank you for having this discussion. Very important. It's very important for the children, for the parents, and for the city, for the great city of New York. And I see so, some advocate over here. We have <laughs> been working together. Uh, this is a very uh, serious situation. And I know uh, Mr. Mayor, and I applaud him for what he has been trying to do for affordable housing, you know, universal pre-K, and many other good programs in New York City. But uh, Program for the youth during the summer, this is something we shouldn't touch. We cannot touch that. Because we all know the importance of a summer program for the young people. If we want to deter the young people from the negative path and set them to the positive one, we want them to be positive citizens. We want them to be successful. We want them to, to, to stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, we have to make sure we, program, we provide them with the resources and the program that they need, including summer program. Right, and we were just talking about all the ways that it affects a child's life, a family's life. Why the recent setbacks then after the inflation, or why the recent decision from the mayor's office to do what he's doing with this? Let me tell you, the budget of the city of New York now is going to be $82 billion, more than last year. And we're in the middle of the negotiations exactly. currently, right? And, of course, so last year, we were forced to come together to rally, and the mayor, as a matter of fact, the mayor restored the money. Yeah. The mayor called my, you know, the office of the mayor called my office and said, Council Member, we are going to restore the money. We were so happy. And as I can say, as you know, it was a victory not only for me, but for the children, for the parents, and for the great city of New York. And I say for the great city of New York because investing money in summer program and, 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 and job for the young people is a good investment for the city of New York. 
good investment in the future of the city of New York, but a good investment also for the prison. Well, because, I'm sorry. No, I, I don't I want to step over you at all. I just want to move the, the conversation in, in, in one direction. When you were saying, we're talking about the kids, and we keep talking about the kids and the benefit that it has for the kids, mm -hmm. but what is the benefit for, for the parent? Well, or I mean, the consequences of the, you know, if this happens, if it's, if it's cut. Well, a lot of these, a lot of our parents are working parents. I mean, they have jobs and they work non-traditional hours. They're not necessarily working nine to five hours sometimes. And so if you have a child or you have more than one child and you don't have a place for them to go, and you're an hourly worker, what do you do? You're, you're going to try to figure out whether you can place your child with a relative, or you're going to try to figure out whether the child can, you know, be on their own, or you're going to cut back on your hours. And we don't want that. Particularly, yeah. we don't want families to make those kinds of sacrifices, um, for, you know, economically or for the safety of their children. And let me add something, if you allow me to. The parents, you know, they're hardworking people. They make New York City great. So that means they got to go to work to take care of their family. And also, I'm t saying that as a, an elected official, they are paying taxes. Yeah. They're maintaining the economy of the city. Yeah, and when they hear this number, 82 billion, don't they think, well, what's another 20, 20 million, million for 20, summer, uh, summer is, programs, right? This is a drop in the bucket. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And the other also impact, impact in the society, in our community. Just imagine a young boy, a young person, who goes to the negative path. If that person, the young person, you know, hurt another person, it's going to cost us more money. Well, I have a quote as you as saying in a, out of an article. You said, it's not only a good investment in young people, but it's a good investment in the safety of, of New York. Absolutely. Just to piggyback on what you were saying. Absolutely. So, yeah. So what is the rationale behind the mayor not making this a priority? The city council seems to have made this a priority. The mayor has said this is not a top priority. What's the rationale behind that? We, we really don't know. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, it doesn't no. fit with everything else that he's been supportive of. I think it's going to be a really hot of. summer, by yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and he's been a wonderful ally on so yes. many of our issues, and so we don't really know. Let's ask the councilman. Has he said anything to you about yes. the issue? You know what? Uh, 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 I really don't know, and I'm surprised, because the mayor used to be a good ally. And I remember before I was elected, I created a non-for-profit organization helping young people. He was one of my—the funders of my organization. But in all, in all fairness, yeah. the mayor gave everyone fair warning. He said, I reinstated it this year. Yes. This will not happen next year. Yeah. So what has transpired during the last year to make this happen? Why? This, is, this should not we, be a surprise. We don't know, but let me tell you, this is a, such an important— Oh, it is. Absolutely. You know, uh, you know the, the dance program is so important for the children and for the city of New York and for the parents. And I think the mayor should give you his position. And in addition to that, we sent a letter to the mayor. I sent a letter to, to the mayor and to the speaker also, signed by 40, more than 40 city council members, asking for the mayor to restore the money. That's the entire city council. Yeah. So I think that should be done. That's great work. You know, we have two minutes left. I want to go around and say, what's next? Stephanie, we'll start with you. How do people get involved in your organization and speak up about these causes? And make so, great maps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we have all of our maps available online. We also have an online e-action campaign. If you go to cccnewyork.org, you can automatically send a letter to Mayor de Blasio urging him to put the money in for the summer camp slots. I'm going to do it. Yolanda, anything? So, um, on our end, we are going to have our parents and our families advocate for these programs to be restored. I mean, they're very important. We don't want them to be lost. Uh, and we're just going to keep doing that on our end. And we're also going to try to help our families find programs in, in the communities where there are programs. I mean, 31,000 children not having programs, where are they going to go? So we're going to try our best to help families, our families, find programs wherever they are. You know, yeah, thank I like you. Yeah. Families, too. It's yeah. Not, it's not families. just the children, Let me it's the families. That, the council member, that, we'll give you the last word. You're the first surprise guest ever, so we want to give you thank equal you, time. Thank you very much. I think you. that, uh, you know, I support what they are saying. We are going to get together again and mobilize. I'm going to see the city council right now. After that, I'm going to speak with the mayor administration and with the city council to see where they are at right now. If they are not in the good position to restore, we will have to rally again and to send petition and to come together, because that should be done. Right. Okay. Hopefully they have your ear in general, and maybe they're even watching BK Live. They saw this, <laughs> us talking about it. Thank you for representing this good. Thank we you. really appreciate it. CCC Thank you so. New York? Yes, spelled out. Spelled out. All right. Right. Council Member Thank Yolanda. You. Thank you. Thank you, all three, very much so. Thank you.